sys underscore b underscore one underscore this these are the three bind variables it's actually picked so we basically try to demystify try to understand how exactly the cost of this specific inner query was calculated as three by the optimizer okay now if we talk about though uh, it's uh, if we talk about the bind variables do you see the how you can get the uh, the real value or the literal value of these bind variables like what was the value uh, used for this b10 b11 and b12 how you get that information anyone uh, from access the access, access predicate that is correct yes one of the method is and the easiest method i would say is always the predicate information column like if you check the b10 uh, you know the conf ttr value here you will see, see conf underscore ttr value is default lock period so this sys underscore b underscore 10 is default underscore lock underscore period and the slash b11 is 60 and b12 is 24 right so this predicate information has got the real information of the literals as well so that's why it's really important to understand the predicate passed by the query instead of the bind variables right this will give you some better picture so once you have that information now you can directly replace sys underscore b underscore 10 with a default lock period and this 11 and 12 bind variable with slash 60 and slash 24 and can try running or executing this query directly on the sql plus or on your database to see how exactly it's behaving right <clears throat> apart from that uh, there are other dynamic views as well so v dollar sql underscore bind underscore capture and db underscore hist underscore bind underscore capture will provide you the same information if you want to get it from the uh, dynamic views so that's also possible but yeah the easiest way and the best possible method is always execute the execution plan i mean get your execution plan and go through the predicate information uh, area and you'll have the answers of all of the binds that are actually used okay <clears throat> Okay, now I think time to switch to. Sir, if in this plan, if if I have to guess, means what is a problematic area, which what I have to look into it. So uh, I will go with the bytes, which is the heaviest, 505k. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. TRN underscore DRN number. I mean, this table access by index row ID, though again, this is a very fast access operation by theory. I mean, table access by index row ID. I mean, you are table is now accessed by using index row id so that's one of the best and the fastest way of getting your rows after unique scans but it's the table size still is the or this trn underscore dna number uh, this result set is actually fetching around 6719 rows right so in total it's actually processed 505k and the cost is also 106 right so you have to check the overall table size if nested loop will be the right operation or hash join so usually if the mm -hmm. table size is big so you you'll see the hash join is uh, is used but here it's actually used as a nested loop so again it depends right but uh, let's first of all focus right uh, how exactly the cost was calculated but yes absolutely your question is now answered like if someone asked me like where to start what is the problematic of the pain area here in the execution plan it's always we i should start with with id4 like what exactly is happening with this table TRN underscore DNA number? Right? And the cost is uh, means the nested loop is the cost of uh, access four and access seven. Similarly, the cost is not for the specific uh, access. Yeah, 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 correct. That's a combination or a club of uh, the child operations, right? So nested loop is actually applied on all of these operations at the very end once they actually done with their processing and proce provide the result set back to it then the nested loop will be applied Absolutely. right oh. anyone of you familiar like how exactly nested loop works uh, wait. what it is yeah i've heard about that i'm sorry you heard yeah actually forget actually I will study nested loop, how it works. Hmm. OK, homework. no problem. So it treat it like, like as a homework or maybe, you know, uh, a takeaway, right? Just spend some time after this session. Just study about nested loop and hash joins if you really want to dig in deep into the execution plan. OK, now I think time has come that I should present the one more question. Actually, yeah? one yeah. little bit question. Actually, in this table, actually, I'm just talking about earlier for that case. Actually, you can see here in the table access is full EI hybrid configuration data. 
but the cost is very less. So in that case, we don't take care of uh, uh, the concern about the, why this table is going to, in, into the full escrow. Right, because yeah. because in real, when you, I mean, again, I won't be able to provide you the uh, the live data for this specific table, but yeah, this EI hybrid configuration underscore data has got five rows in total, right? And out of the five rows, when we are passing conf underscore ATTR name underscore uh, default lock period and divided with 16 underscore 24, only one row was selected as a result of this sub query. So that is why out of the five, is, it doesn't really make any sense to use the index here for scanning those five rows. So that's why full table scan was preferred as an access path for this uh, for this uh, sub query. And that is why you do not need not to pay any attention because this is, itself is pretty quick, right? But just for your own satisfaction, you should always go and check the overall row count, right? Like how many rows are there in this table EI hybrid configuration data, right? And uh, check for this column, the uniqueness and everything. And accordingly, you will be able to understand why the optimizer is choose uh, or chosen table accessible as an access path, not the index scans or index based access paths. Okay. okay. Fine. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, these are the files which I prepared for you guys. Let's check. Uh, yeah. This is the 10053 trace that I have generated for this specific SQL. So what I did, I first enable the ultra using ultra session command, the 10053 trace event with the uh, with a value five over uh, 12 context level 12 that basically provides you with some weight specific information binds and everything right so and after that i ran that sql and then wait for that query to finish and then close the uh, uh that 53 trace and we have the final trace available in the dump directory so just this is just a copy that i've moved from that production server here all right, just to make you understand like how exactly the cost is calculated. OK, before that, let me first of all jump into the subquery part because our focus is to understand why the cost three and how it got calculated, right? Uh, for that uh, subquery statement, right? This is the entire SQL. Yeah, here is your SQL, by the way. Within the SQL trace, 10053 trace, we are checking right now so we've got the entire query block text right so next next check the if you uh, i mean though again um within the predicate information uh you can see the bind variables and their literal values by your own but yeah there is also a way using 10053 but for that you need to go to the peak the values okay so what was the bind? 10, 11, 12. Okay. Bind 4, bind 5. Okay. So this is bind 10. Value was default lock period. Bind 11 was value 60. And bind 12 was value 24. So now you can go and replace uh, the subquery with the, with the literal values. Right, so that's how you can go and check the peaked values as well. Now, let's check the access path operation. Access path analysis. Okay, here it is. Now, here if you check that uh, the access path analysis uh, for EAI hybrid underscore configuration data is here, like how exactly the cost three was calculated. Right, so if you Carefully check. These are few of the factors that comes into the picture while preparing the final figure or the value of this particular scan, right? If you check this conf attr name, which is used in the var clause, it was a var char two based uh, data type. Average length. So the very first thing that comes into the picture while creating or while doing the calculation apart from the statistics. Again, that also is part of the statistics too. But yeah, average length was 24. NDV is what? NDV is number of distinct values. So in that table, we have got five uh, distinct records, right? We have got no null values. And then the row density, right? So these are few of the things that comes into the picture or uh, comes into the scene while creating the final figure, right? And after that, what all you'll see, you'll see the scan IO 
and the CPU, right? And that's how it actually reaches this final cost of this, right? Now, if you see, like, uh, where is that? Uh, okay, card. Card is what? Cardinality. So, cardinality. Anyone would like to answer what exactly is cardinality? Distinct values. Directly proportional to the number of distinct values in the column. Yeah, partially correct. Yes, cardinality is the number of the rows that the optimizer guesses will be the process will be processed for a plan step. And for example, if the statistics are old or if they are missed or if they are incomplete, then this can be wildly go wrong, right? I mean, you want to look for where exactly the optimizer sees the five rows cardinality, but in reality there are fifty thousand rows, for example. So a high higher cardinality means you are going to fetch more number of rows. Means you are going to do more work. And uh, that ultimately proves like the query will take longer. Thus, the cost is usually higher, right? So cardinality, if we talk about the calculation part, so it's basically a multiple of selectivity into total number of rows, right? Now, someone can ask me this question. What exactly is selectivity then? Then selectivity is basically represents a fraction or a percentage of the data. Again, a kind of a rows that is returned or accessed by the operation select or the operate. Here in our case, the operation, uh, the selectivity was one, right? So selectivity equals number of the rows returned by total number of rows. That's how you actually calculate the cardinality and selectivity operations. So now if you see the original cardinality was five because NDV was five and that's that's 100% true, right? Because number of distinct values, the more, I mean, um, the number, the, the many you have distinct values, you have the same same number of cardinality. So original cardinality that was calculated by five and it rounded off and then computed. Any idea what exactly is this? Why this rounded cardinality or what what, is, what does it mean? And why rounded cardinality is a way off than the original count or the original cardinality? Because original cardinality is the original. I mean, before you apply anything, right? That's a simple plain cardinality. And I mean, I had five distinct values in the table, but the SQL has resulted only into the one row as an output. Hence, one is the rounded cardinality. As simple as that. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, talking about the cost. So, I think now after seeing this specific section, which is here, which I've just highlighted, now you'll be able to have some idea like what exactly is the cost. So in short, cost is what? It's just the amount of the work that the optimizer estimate to run your query via specific plan, right? And always the optimizer uh, generally, uh, again, in, sing in quotes, generally prefers the lower cost plans. And as you're seeing, the optimizer cost model account not only for the CPU guys, it also counts the IO, CPU and sometime network resources as well, and that will be used by the query. That's why you are saying you're seeing scan IO cost. That is a disk cost basically scan CPU cost. That's a resource count, and then you will see the total scan IO cost. Right, so total scan CPU is the cost. So that's how the IO cost and the CPU cost which plays an important role and sometimes network resources, which makes up the overall cost. You getting me? I had one question regarding the cardinality. Yeah. Okay. So suppose in uh, this case there were five rows, so the cardinality showed as five. Huh? But uh, but since only one was selected, so it is showing rounded uh, cardinality. The next as rounded cardinality one. as one. But suppose uh, we are using where clause, and it is actually getting two uh, for a specific part of a explained plan. It is selecting two out of the five rows. So will the rounded cardinality show as two? that the number will be different, right? So then you have a different rounded cardinality, correct? I'm only uh, considering this, spec is this specific case where we've got five distinct values in the table, but, but if you see like in your where clause, now you, have, you are getting uh, two records. And of course, you'll see the difference in the uh, computed or the rounded cardinality too. So accordingly, the calculation will happen. Right, so this is only okay. this for this specific case, right? So, but this same logic applies to whatever where clause what you actually push into your SQL statement. Okay, okay. now talking about the IO cost, any idea like what exactly is the IO cost here? I I just explained, right? What it is? How much CPU memory and no uh, CPU for CPU we have CPU underscore cost, right? Then what what is the uh, IO cost? Uh, IO cost is basically the discrete. 
That's right. Absolutely. Yes. IO cost of the operation is an is basically estimated by the query optimizer approach. I mean, um, uh, how should I say? I mean, the value of this column is proportional to the number of data blocks that is read by the operation, right? For uh, for statements that use the rule based approach, this column is run null, right? So if you are familiar with the rule based uh, um, optimizer, so this column was usually null at that point, but now we have got CBO as a full replacement of rule based optimizer. Now in the newer version of Oracle database, I think starting from 11G or something like you do not see the RBOs now anymore. You always have uh, the CBO in picture, right? So um, that's basically, you know, uh, is the number of the blocks, the physical blocks that you actually read by the operation. So that's it. That's the IO cost, right? And now talking about the CPU cost, um, uh, this again is uh, is number of the uh, the CPU cycles, right, or the machine CPU cycles that is required for the operation, right? And again, for the rule based approach, I remember this column was used to be null, but again, no point of discussing rule based here because again, uh, rule based is no more there, and we always have the CPU uh, to process or to get the final figure. Okay. Now. <clears throat> If someone asks you like how exactly this three value was calculated, I think now you guys are confident. Now you got the answer of your questions like what all contributes and consolidates the the cost figure. So it's always say like percent of CPU, but in real it's not only CPU, but it's actually a club or a combination of CPU plus IO plus network. That's actually helps to calculate the overall cost. All OK? We just saw with our own eyes, with our own two eyes, like how exactly it's actually calculates everything to get the final cost figure. So this is a misunderstanding. I see in a lot of the DBAs, they always say, OK, it's 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 only the CPU which actually pays, uh, which is the only sole contributor to the cost, but actually it's not. In real, it's CPU uh, cost, IO cost, and sometimes the network resources that will be used by your query. OK.